everyone, it's currently Saturday and I am about to transition a couple of plants into semi hydroponics. My favorite time to transition a plant is when it's completely dried out. The soil is completely dry because then the soil kind of just falls off. This is the Philodendron Silver Stripe that I got pretty recently. There's two of them. They're currently in six inch pots, but I think I want to combine them into one eight inch pot. One of them is dry, one of them is not. So I'm just gonna roll with it. I've shown this so many times on my channel, but you know, some people like repotting videos. Things I need, so obviously I got the plants and then this is a old nursery pot. This is, I believe an eight inch pot and it already has the tape on the sides because I, I usually do this so I can pull a nursery pot out of the planter easily. But for the one that I'm using today, I don't really need it, but it's fine, I'll just leave it on. I have some old LECA in here, it's reusable. You can keep reusing it for plants. A way to clean LECA is just by boiling it and you know letting it cool off and then using it in the future. I think some people use alcohol or hydrogen peroxide, but you could just Google those methods. But I just boil it sometimes. I will sometimes just rinse it and use it for a different one. And I haven't had any problems yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the LECA here. I'm gonna measure out in this one how much I need. Oh shoot. I don't soak my LECA, I just rinse it through. Because this is LECA that I've used before, it's not gonna have as much dust as brand new LECA will have. Like if you just open a brand new bag, it's gonna have a crazy amount of dust in it. So you might wanna rinse that out outside and dump the water that way because it could clog up the sinks because it's clay. But with this, not that much dust is gonna come out. I'm really just gonna wet the LECA. All right, so we got that ready. Next, I am going to get rid of the soil in each of these pots. This one's the dry one. I'm starting with that because I knew it would just be easier for me. <laughs> Look how it just falls right off. It's so much easier to take the soil off. It's like my least favorite part of repotting a plant into semi-hydro is dealing with the soil. Hence why I do semi-hydroponics in the first place. There's a lot of frequently asked questions that I get asked. So I can kind of just run through some of them that pop into my head as I go because the, my process is kind of tedious. Like if you've seen my repotting videos before, I'm just trying to get rid of all the soil right now off of the roots as much as I can. Something I get asked a lot is if semi-hydroponics can be done without adding nutrients. My answer to that is if you're trying to go long-term, no. But if you want to just be propagating it, propagating a plant and just trying it out that way, then yes, absolutely. You don't need the nutrients right away to start. I do get questions asking about like, hey, my nutrients don't come until a few weeks from now. Can I go ahead and get started? Yeah, yeah, you can. You know, it's not gonna just start declining that quickly, if, especially if you have nutrients on the way. I'm trying my best to do this without making the biggest mess, but you know. That never really happens. Sometimes what you'll find at the top of your LECA is like a white fuzz. If it's plain white and not fuzzy that you see at the very top, that's just called efflorescence, which is inevitable if you're using something like LECA because with evaporation that happens, the concentrations of the salt minerals rises to the top of the medium. And that's why having flush jays is important because you'll be able to flush that all away and then replace your nutrients from there. But if you see white and it's fuzzy, it's likely a harmless mold. Like, you know, when you have soil, like a plant in soil, so you see this white fuzzy mold at the top and it's not harming your plant at all. So that's fine, just rinse it through. But sometimes like when I see that, and I see that my plant's fine, I won't even rinse it then. Because if my plant's chilling, I'm chilling. You know, I did get asked on, I think my most recent Instagram photo, common mistakes, I guess, with some hydroponics. And I would say water level is one of them too. So water level, um, putting it too high, that's a common mistake because if you are having the water level be extremely high, then you might as well just not have the LECA in there because if the water level goes all the way to the top, like this is your container and then you have the LECA go all the way up there and then the water is all the, all the way up there too. It's not using capillary action at all. So you might as well just not have the LECA in there in the first place because it's not really serving its purpose in there uh, other than just anchoring your plant down, which is fine. Like if you wanna use it for that reason, by all means go for it. But in that case, it's not really using semi or passive hydroponics. In the past, I got kind of hate for saying semi-hydro 
because it's like what really makes it semi hydroponics versus hydroponics i mean call it what you want i'm not gonna change what i call it because i've been calling it that from the start before there was like a lot of information on it i saw the information from first rays it was called semi hydroponics there so i'm just gonna keep going with it um, passive hydroponics makes more sense but i've been calling it for semi hydro for so long i'm just not gonna change it. the way that i see house plants is it shouldn't be like an added stressor even though like if you you have a bunch of plants is probably going to be an added stressor like i don't know how people who have like hundreds of plants do it that's amazing to me i'm probably never going to be one of those people that have 100 plants because i counted in my last video i only have like 45 plants i thought i had more even then it's a lot of work because i work full time and then on my weekends like i always have to be doing something plant related that obviously cuts into my free time which I I'm not complaining. It's my hobby, so I love doing it. I feel like if I had 100 plants, that's like having another job right there. This took me a lot longer than I thought it would. Maybe because I'm rambling. Another common mistake I see is not getting enough soil out. I'm pretty lenient when it comes to taking out the soil. I don't have every last drop out. I'm not like scrubbing the roots or anything like that, but I make sure there's a good amount out. I kind of gauge it based on my past experience, and it's like if I see that my plants usually do well with like a certain amount of soil out, I'm just gonna keep rolling with it like there's no need for me to like stress out and kind of traumatizing the roots i have seen something like this go straight into leka before and it's like that's probably gonna cause rot because you just have so much soil left over i still have to rinse things through i need to use something to catch it in here so i don't clog up my sink with soil because that would be very bad yeah now i'm moving on to the other plant and crap this one's wet another common mistake with semi hydroponics is like overthinking and over stressing about things because Likely, if you have had plants that are doing well in soil, you pretty much know what you're doing when it comes to taking care of plants, right? Don't completely forget everything that you know about plant care just because you're switching the medium. A lot of things still apply. Light, humidity, location of where you put your house plants, all of that doesn't change. Looking for pests, there's still a lot of things that do apply. Um, whether or not you have your plant in, in semi-hydroponics or in soil. Sometimes I will get questions like, hey, my plant's not doing well, what do I do? I don't even know where to start with that because there's too many variables that go into it when transitioning a plant. Like what I'm doing right now, for instance, was the plant even healthy to begin with is a question that you should probably ask yourself. How did the transition go? How much soil did you get off of it? How were the roots? What's the water level at? How much nutrients did you put in? Are you flushing it? When's the last time you checked on the roots? How's the humidity? Like, is your environment the right kind of environment for that plant to begin with? Like, there's so many factors that go into it that I don't really know how to answer a question like that. Yeah, because like, I'm not there to see the transition Happen? Do I baby the plants that I transition? Quick answer to that is no. Put it in a place that you think the plant's gonna do well. Don't go sticking it in a place that is like completely dark. Your plant's not gonna do well. Any place that the, the plant would do well in soil, that's where you should stick the plant. Another, I think, misconception about some hydroponics is that you're not gonna ever have to deal with pests and that is not true it can reduce the risk of having pests it doesn't completely eliminate the risk especially if you have plants still in soil and i do have plants still in soil some i just you know i don't care to transition if it's a really large plant like sometimes i just don't mind having it in soil drought tolerant plants they can do well in semi hydroponics snake plants succulents cacti i don't own every single plant so i can't really speak to that but it's like i've seen Certain people say like, oh my God, like I will never work on this kind of plant because it didn't work for them. But then other people who have tried it like had success with that certain plant. Take everything you hear about semi hydro, about plant care with a grain of salt, especially if you just see it on social media. Still trying to take the soil out. I think that the most common question that I get is, can I put this plant in like a, go ahead and try it out because every plant that i put into leka was an experiment and you know it's worked out for me so far <laughs> so i currently have a snake plant that is in semi-hydro and it's been in there for like 
over a year now. It's doing well, you know, growing. It's not even in bright light or anything. It's a, it's in our bathroom upstairs, which doesn't get like a ton of light. I've had cacti in semi hydroponics, also a uh, succulent. Both did well. I just decided to put them in soil because I wanted to put them outside. I don't recommend to get a plant in soil, transition it to LECA, and then putting it right back into soil because I mean, that's just a lot of trauma for a plant to handle. But um, I did that for a baby Rita cactus that I got from my friend Valerie. So it's growing outside now and it, it's doing better because I mean, it gets way more sunlight outside than it does inside because it's a cactus and they like a lot of light. Yeah, you could definitely transition a plant like back and forth like that. I just, you know, don't recommend it unless you like really want to put something outside that I don't mind drought tolerant plants being in soil like string of hearts. Uh, string of pearls because you don't have to water it often anyways that also doesn't mean that you can't have those kind of plants in some hydroponics i just personally don't i could just see it being a little difficult to transition those plants because of the size of the leca unless you get leca that is each piece is small because it might be hard to anchor those kind of plants that's what i have going on right now and then i am gonna rinse i'm just gonna rinse this uh the roots through until it looks like that. See? See? You gotta do this. Okay, thank you, love. I still have a little bit of soil on there, but in my experience, that hasn't been an issue. It just really depends on your growing conditions. So some people like to have it like completely white, which I applaud you for, because I that's really hard to do. Unless the roots are like really, really thick, it's easier. I'm just gonna do that for all of the roots and then I'm gonna go ahead and pot it up. The leka that I rinsed earlier, I'm just gonna dump some out. I'm gonna leave some at the bottom like that. I'm gonna arrange it how I want it. I'm gonna hold it in my hand like it's a bouquet. I'm gonna place it in there on top and throw the rest of the leka in around it. So I'm holding it like this. I'm gonna place it in. Like that. Just kind of holding it down and trying to cover the roots. Another reason why I like to have the mix of the drought tolerant plants, like a string of hearts, the variegated and regular, and a string of pearls. I feel like my flush day is kind of giant because I do have most of the plants in my hydro. I don't know, having a mix of it kind of makes it easier. Like I don't have to flush every single plant. I love the in-between flush days because like today was an in-between flush day because I flushed all of the plants last week. And that just means that I go around with a cup of water and I seriously just pour it in the water reservoir to make the water level go up. And it's so quick so I don't have to come over to the sink and wait for water to drain out like if it was a plant in soil. So it's all potted up. Wow, look how full. I need to make sure that the roots are adequately covered. I think they are. So rinse it through again. That looks so pretty. I'm just gonna plop in this pot that has no drainage holes. Ideally, the nursery pot would not be sticking out like this but I figured it's a trailing plant, so it, it will grow over. I cannot form words today. Here is some nutrient water that I had left over because last week was a flush day. It's all good. Perfect. So that's what I like to hear when I pull up a plant. I like to hear the water go down. Keep it at the one third level. This is where I'm just gonna set it right now. Obviously temporary, cause it's such a random spot for my plant to go. But this is where I had been keeping it when I first got it because I like to quarantine my plants when I first get them, when they're brand new, because you know, you never know if it has any pests or anything. You just don't wanna risk the rest of your plants from having a giant pest infestation. So pretty. Wow. In the last video, my husband was building the shelf right in front of me, but then since we got hardwood, we didn't have the right screws for it, so the screws kept breaking. He actually finished it the very next day after he went out and got some more screws. So here it is. So cute. And right now, what we have on it is the variegated string of pearls. It's like not that variegated. <laughs> Uh, we got his potato plant, the Stephania erecta, 
in LECA that we still have not gotten an adequate pot for. It's still in the measuring cup. And it actually has like a little baby root if I were to pick it up, but I'm not gonna mess with it right now. And we got the regular string of pearls. Over here, my variegated the shitty a million hearts is actually doing really well into my hydroponics you can see like the all white bundle there it almost looks like it's a bloom but i think it's just because it's all white so i got it originally in this nursery pot and then this i'm reusing a laundry detergent cup like a measuring cup for laundry detergent because this has a drainage hole in it so that's what the nutrient reservoir is in. This right here is just hardwood oak so the hardwood oak matches my oak dining table from article we used these brackets that the honeycomb shelves are held up with as well so i think that's gonna be it for this video that's it thanks for watching bye